You can stay where you're at or you can move down front. We're going to have a small crowd this afternoon, but wherever you're comfortable seeing the screen would be great. Thank you. General Harris, thank you for stopping in to, to listen to it. Uh, my name is Nate Titus. I work with the Alamo AFCA group here, and I'm responsible for some of the support for this organization. And I, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce you this afternoon, uh, Mr. Chip Van Hyland. Uh, Chip is the headquarters 25th Air Force, Air Force Cryptologic Office, Senior Language Authority, Human Language Technology Authority, and Chief of Intelligence Force Management and Training. That's about the longest duty title I, I've ever had. <clears throat> Mr. Von Hyland is responsible for the training and force development of over 12,000 uh, 25th Air Force intelligence professionals, officer, enlisted, civilian, guard, and reserve personnel. So he has a big, big duty responsibility. Mr. Von Hyland has been serving the Air Force continuously for 32 years, with 22 years service both enlisted and as an officer, and as a department of the Air Force senior civilian. He is the recognized expert on intelligence training and foreign language with the DOD and intelligence community. He has twice deployed as a civilian to combat zones in Kabul, Afghanistan, in support of ISAF J-2. Chip's long career in service to his country is filled with accomplishments that have rewritten the book on intelligence and language training. As he continues to improve his education by working on his doctorate in educational leadership, he will also continue to serve his country. Please join me in welcoming Chip, Mr. Chip Von Hyland. Are we good? Good afternoon. Is that a little too loud? Sorry. It's going to be a first for me uh, trying to make a presentation with one arm tied on the side of my back. Um, was not a rodeo accident. Uh, too many deployments. So how many, how many of you are familiar with Simon Sinek and the Golden Circle? Um, Google it. Watch it on YouTube, I guarantee you it'll be the best six minutes uh, you spent. So the, ba the basic premise um, about, of the golden circle is that a lot of people focus on the what. What are we doing? And then the how. How are we going to do it? Um, but they tend to neglect the most important part, which is the why. So for me, it's really all about the why, right? Why, why do I do what I do every day? Um, I love my job. Uh, not too many people can say that. I'm excited to go to work. I have the best team, I think, um, assembled, all first round draft picks, and, and everybody is, is really um, excited about what they do. Um, the what is intelligence force management and training. I've been doing that for uh, almost 11 years, uh, primarily focused on some of the toughest uh, AFSs. Um, linguist, airborne linguist, um, especially Russian airborne linguists have been a huge challenge over the years. Super high demand asset. Um, folks in the Rivet Joint community have been in the desert since uh, 1990 and uh, there's no respite. But I'll tell you they're, they're some of the most motivated airmen. Uh, our folks in SOF are deployed over 280 days a year and funny enough my highest re-enlistment rates are at Herbert Field. You know, they love the job. So that's sort of the what of what's in my portfolio. And, and the, the how is, um, General Harris talked about this generation, right? So just recently, uh, as, as early as October of last year, the millennial generation, uh, which was previously in October of 2014, the third of the US population, is now the largest segment of our population today. Um, some of you are in that segment in this room, LT probably right there. And um, John Harris, you talked about your son and, and texting. I have three teenagers, uh, 19, 17, and 15. And um, my daughter will sit on the couch with her phone playing trivia crack in French, um, have her laptop, watch TV, uh, have her headphones in, but she will still interrupt my conversation with a cogent comment. So they're that dialed in, right? And, and that's, the, that's the kind of the who of, of what our business is, but, but the why for me is very important because I'm, I'm, I'm working to develop the best ISR and cyber ISR professionals um, in the world today. And 
you know, we only recruit the top 10% of recruits into the Air Force, uh, into the intelligence career fields. They're some of the smartest young Americans today, and um, they, they sure like to ask why a lot, but they're, they're quick, they're adept, and um, they get it. But I go back to the why. The why for me is I'm gonna ask a 19-year-old American to tell me who to kill, right? We're gonna ask that Pashto linguist to tell the Viper driver where to drop the bomb. That's a lot of responsibility to put on a young person. Um, we're asking an Im imagery analyst in DCGS to tell us exactly where to put the crosshairs. Um, these kids are, are, they're not really kids. I mean, they're, they're fighting Americans and they're, they're making decisions um, about who to kill, who not to kill. And uh, while they may be four or 5,000 miles away, they're there. They're in comms with the folks on the ground. I've talked to airmen that um, watched an army corporal that they've been talking to every day for six months and flown an overwatch mission with them and watch them get blown up. It, it's a very, very big responsibility we're asking of these young people. So we owe them the best training possible. And um, I apologize for PowerPoint. Uh, I hate PowerPoint, um, but I don't have internet access. If I did, I would just take you to the website and, and show you what we're doing. But, but I will tell you that the feedback we're getting, we've been doing uh, this sort of next-gen training for about two and a half years. And um, I love my brethren in the comm community, but they can't keep up. They can't keep up with mobile device management. They can't keep up with iPads. The, the policy can't keep up. But this generation lives on the mobile ecosystem in multiple environments. So that's what we've done, is we've taken, we've taken their training to the mobile ecosystem because that's where they live. And, and if I can get an airman to train at the gym on a mobile device while they're running a 2K or something, we all win. Um, if they're waiting in line at MPF or finance, that never happens, right? But if you have some time out there, you can actually get some training. Um, we've been doing technology integration for several years now, and we're excited about it. Matter of fact, um, there was an article in the uh, Guardian in, in the first part of this year that said 2016 was going to be the year of VR. We've been doing VR for two years. Uh, we've got HTC Vive VR. Um, so I'm gonna make it a point to get to Langley and show you Russian aircraft in virtual reality, and that's how we're gonna do Vizrecki today. We got them on Google Cardboard, I have it on my cell phone. I got a home VR kit that cost me 40 bucks, and it's amazing. But, th but that is really training of the future and what we have to do. So, so imagine walking through a network, right? And seeing your packets and seeing packets drop and things like that. That, that's how we should be training, and that's, that's what we should be doing a day. So, hopefully I'm pointing this in the right direction. It's operator error already. I think I killed it, Marco. Just escape out. Yep. Okay, so Secretary James said a couple of important things this morning. Uh, one is that everybody needs critical thinking, right? It doesn't matter if you're an intelligence analyst, an ISR professional, a comm person, a cyber warrior, um, or if you're in the cockpit. Right? Critical thinking is, is, is something that needs to be a part of everything we do. So why are we doing what we're doing? Uh, ISR 2023 was a task levied on us by uh, General Otto. And, and the other thing is, um, I have a task to revolutionize analysis. And to do that, um, what I don't want to do is put a, young, a bunch of airmen in the classroom with a bunch of PowerPoint slides. What we want them to do is is to embrace a culture of analysis and really understand that whatever they do, it doesn't matter if you're an imagery analyst, a SIGIN analyst, a linguist, you're an analyst first. That's really what your job is, is to make sense of the data. 
And the challenge is, right now, big data. There's a lot of it. Um, people don't realize how much is out there. And really trying to find that needle in the haystack is a lot of work. And it takes a lot of training. And it takes a career of training. So we wanted to create this online environment where everybody could constantly um, be thinking, what, what, what was my first thought this morning when I, when I saw what happened in Brussels is I started to try and put the pieces together. Could we have predicted it? Could we have known? Should we have known? I'm sure the same discussions are happening right now. And that's not just for folks in the ISR realm. That's on law enforcement. That's on everybody else. And it's on the politicians' minds, right? So um, if you watch Shepard Smith, not that I'm advocating Fox, but if you watch that show, they're doing analysis on the news because the last thing they want to do is misrepresent the data. So that's kind of the mindset we want folks to get into. So the challenge I found is that there's a lot of stuff all over the place. Um, and with a millennial, if they got to take more than three or four mouse clicks, they're done, right? That app is no good, I'm not interested, and this is not a product that I want to be involved with, right? So we wanted to find out, nobody has done this, and we thought, okay, we'll do it not just for the Air Force, we're gonna do it for the combat support agencies, we're gonna do it for the DOD, for all the other services, because we put the right team together, and we went ahead and consolidated everything into a single, unclassified environment. We're gonna mirror the same, the same scenario, the same capability on the high side with classified data, but for right now, 99% of the data we need, regardless if it's ISR or cyber, is unclassified, right? So being able to put those pieces together, being able to figure out what's going to happen next in the Ukraine, right? Um, is Poland on the table for Mr. Putin? That's the kind of thinking we want folks to have. So we created a website called Octane. You'll, you'll hear a lot of branding today. You'll hear Octane, AMP, Amen. Um, magic, um, those kind of terms tend to stick with, with the airmen and they remember, right? How am I going to get to that? So AMP is the Analytic Mind Project, and it's really a, a collection of daily analytic challenges, which you can subscribe to either via SMS or email or um, whatever method. Everything we build is platform agnostic. Everything we build, we own. 100% the Air Force owns it. The JAG has cleared us to share everything we have with all members of the DOD and academia, which is great because we have a very strong partnership with academia in all of the things we do. Um, so pretty simple website. Um, we actually spend a lot of time on user interface and user experience. Um, I actually told my team to look at the USAA website because it's one of the best ones out there for user interface, user experience. And we went back to the drawing board several times. Um, we have partnered with the Air Force Academy. We're building curriculum for the Air Force Academy. They're using our critical thinking materials for cadets. Uh, and you're not going to get a better training lab or training environment because you know, you've got some of the top uh, young Americans in the country out there, some of the best and brightest. And they're giving us really good feedback. Uh, we're very close to our schoolhouse at Goodfellow Air Force Base. I'm a strong believer in your seed corn being the place where you start, and you need to always keep them current, and so we maintain a very close partnership with the folks at Goodfellow. So, what is AMP? AMP is a series of daily analytic problems. They're only two pages long, and they're, they're actually really good, and there's a leaderboard for AMP. Funny enough, we, we went to Goodfellow last week, and the first question I got from the airmen is, can we have our own leaderboard so we can have just the, the student leaderboard because we don't think it's fair to compete against the instructors unless we're beating them, right? So, and, and I'm sure they will. But we take feedback. Uh, we have a feedback mechanism built in. This is a beta site right now, which has passed all of the required uh, security testing, uh, the separation of containers, et cetera. Uh, the last hurdle we have is getting the, the com and PA folks to say, yes, you're legal, and you can run a .com. We've, been, we've done it before. We have our, all of our language materials are on a .com because I can't do language on the Nippernet. I can't go to Al Jazeera and, and do Arabic. I just can't. It's blocked. 
and every base is different, right? I got Octane unblocked on Nippernet so we can actually get to it by following the process, the blue tag or blue note. Um, in some cases where we have capability, we've taken these analytic uh, challenges and we've translated them into a foreign language. Why? Because I have 3,200 linguists and the rest of the IC has about 25,000. Now I'm, I'm able to do both a critical thinking exercise and a language exercise at the same time. Double training. We're double tapping everywhere we can because the most valuable commodity any of us has is time, right? The one thing you can't get back. And, and the airmen value their time more. I'm sure everybody's a fan of um, uh, ancillary training and all the things you have to do every year, right? That, that's time. And, and every senior leader has said, we have got to find a way to make that shorter. It's nice, now in some of those things, you can go straight to the test, especially if it's something you do every year, right? Intel oversight, I just go to the test and I'm done. Five minutes. Um, I learned from an airman that there's a web page called Wiki Answers for ancillary training. Senior airman told me that. When you got 19 CBTs to do before deploying, it's a time saver. Um, the main thing we're hoping to do is reinforce the concepts. These are based on the actual structured analytical techniques, based on the guidance from the Intel community, but also we took a lot of our information from the academic community. There's a huge push in America um, among the universities to reinforce critical thinking as a core skill for every student. I firmly believe we should start that at every level of education, K through 12. Australia is actually now mandating that they're going to put critical thinking in the curriculum because you're going to need that to succeed, whether you're a programmer, English teacher, it doesn't matter. Um, you're going to need those skills to be successful. Here's what it looks like. Um, I'm still not too happy with this kind of page. We're, we're constantly tweaking it to make it more user friendly. But you basically click on one. Um, we have a tutorial on critical thinking. It's one of many. Uh, if you're not aware, there are organizations run by huge academics called criticalthinking.org, criticalthinking.net. Um, academia is big on it. Uh, of course, it's expensive too. If you want to go to their symposium, it's like 1500 bucks uh, to be certified as a critical thinker. We also have the Analyst Mentor Network, abbreviation Airman. Um, again, this is a place that's got a LinkedIn, Facebook kind of feel where we, we ask for mentors to participate and to become a part of the project and serve as mentors, identify their areas of expertise. Could be cyber, could be targeting, could be any, one, any particular area, could be big data. Um, there are data scientists out there today that are talking about big data. People don't realize just how big it is. Um, and we're, we're setting up the same thing on the high side if you want to ask a real, no kidding, uh, mentorship question on a specific target or area where you need to talk to the expert. If you want to talk to the, the expert on Russian air, we, we all know who those two people are in the Air Force, right, Dan? And um, they're going to be up there. But they're also there on the low side to say, hey, have you thought about this and that? Have you gone to this link? Have you, have you taken this course? There's a lot of free education out there. There's massive open online courses. I could take a Python class if I was maybe thinking I had a chance of passing it. Um, but all of that stuff is out there and available. And that's what we're trying to get Airmen to, to get focused on. What we really want to do is get a dialogue going between this very bright millennial generation who, oh, by the way, make up 70% of my workforce. 70%. Those are the workhorses. Those are the folks that are doing the grind every day. What I don't have are techs and masters to mentor and train them. So what we're trying to do is expand that network. We have folks at the air staff that brief the chief of staff every day, right? Misha Wales is one of the recognized experts. And now airmen have a way to get to them, especially if I'm a Russian linguist and I want to talk to one of the, the preeminent Russian air analysts um, and get some guidance on some of the things I want to do. We have, we have some of the best and brightest at NASIC who would love nothing than to mentor a young airman and carry them, take them along on, on this journey. We also have some of the smartest cyber ISR minds. Folks don't seem to realize that 25th Air Force contributes 70% of the cyber mission forces to the cyber mission teams. So a large chunk of that left and right of the bang is really ISR, right? General Alexander had the best description when he said, you know what, um, 
If I'm the guy driving around the neighborhood, getting the garage code for every garage in the neighborhood, when it's time to hit that garage door button, I need to hit that button, right? Because I know the environment and I know which garage door is going to open. So we're trying to get uh, uh, the best experts talking to these young airmen so we can raise them, right? The challenge we're having today is you don't retain the best and brightest, especially in cyber. I've had one JCAC airman re-enlist in the last five years. But that's because um, J.P. Morgan's sitting outside NSA Skate hiring people, right? And, uh, and industry is hiring. Everybody wants our airmen. Um, every combat support agency wants an airman. Nothing against the other services, but we really focus on how we train our airmen. Um, and this is going to be just one way to make them better. Um, so, funny story. I don't know if that picture doesn't come out too clear. I didn't even know it was on the website till I saw it. But um, somebody asked me a question in 2003, Iraqi Freedom, about um, SA-6 optically guided missiles. And I sent him this picture. I said, you mean the one I'm sitting on in Baghdad? So that's then Captain Von Hylen. Um, here's an example of the mentor network. Uh, that's Jeff Johnson. He's a retired colonel. And he's providing advice. Uh, amazing career. Russian attache, uh, original human tour, behind the wall in East Germany, crawling through ditches. That's kind of experience we don't get today. But, but now an airman has a chance to ask those questions. Level three Russian and, and German speaker, uh, former assistant commandant at Delight. This is the kind of talent we're trying to put out there for airmen to reach out to. You know, It's kind of like, I hate to use the term weapon school-like, but, but we actually have weapons instructors on here as mentors as well. And they're doing it on their own time as volunteers because they also care a lot about this next generation. So Intel Crack, everybody's heard about it. Uh, words with friends. So we, we also built Intel Trivia. Right now we have about 1,800 questions. We're building more every day. Um, the ODNI likes this concept so much they gave us 500 grand to do more. Anytime you can take money from outside the Air Force and use it to help airmen, that's a win. That's a, I'm buying a bottle of wine today, right? So um, cell phone to cell phone, uh, you hit your contacts list, you invite somebody or you challenge them, right? And uh, score points go back and forth. Great concept. Could we adapt this to other areas? Could we take the code we already wrote and change it to cyber trivia? Absolutely, because you know what? We own the code. Right? That's another benefit of what we're doing. Like I said, everything we've built, we own. Um, we're again testing it out with students, um, both at our schoolhouse and at the academy. We have a strong partnership with the academy. Um, one of the things we're doing for the academy like this is we're building out uh, Military Strategic Studies uh, 200. Guess what? Every officer candidate, ROTC, OTS, and the academy has to take that class. So we took 150 PowerPoint slides and, and turned them into an ebook with built-in and embedded critical thinking and apps and, and other things like that. So once it goes final, we're giving it to everybody and we're happy to give it to West Point, to Annapolis, to whoever else, right? Because what we're hoping to do is build this. We're trying to get other people to collaborate with us, become part of the team, and build stuff of their own. And the deal is, if you build stuff, you share it with us. Whatever we build, we make available to you and build our sort of own iTunes University with all of our content. We're already doing that with the Marine Corps. We took the Air Command and Staff College 40-hour critical thinking course, and we fully built it out at, at no cost to them um, and gave it back to them as an iBook so that they can now let students download that. Um, and we took some of their embedded um, videos and, and we, we gave it the magic touch. And I have a short video that I'll show you that talks about that. So secure commercial cloud, right? We got to be there. In today's day and age, if you're not on the cloud, uh, I'm sure most people know what eyesight is, right? Eyesight's coming. We got to be part of it. Uh, several combat support agencies are already on the cloud, uh, both on the high and the low side. Um, we authenticate users. Um, we track, here's the best part. If you, tell, if you ask me uh, who scored the highest on these 
analytic mind challenges for this area of the world, I could tell you the top five people. So it sounds a little bit brother-like, but when the Air Force wants to know who are my best analysts for that area, I can tell you, well, this is anecdotal, but I'll tell you that they scored 100 on the Ukraine in every challenge that they took. That's useful information for a commander, right? And that's part of why we tied everything to an LMS. The other thing is we tie, we're tying into an LMS because data matters, right? I need to know if we're getting a return on investment. Are people actually using it? Um, I know we overloaded the server at Goodfellow the first day we let the students try it, so everybody loved it. And that's good feedback, right? Maybe it's a little negative feedback. We needed better bandwidth. But, but the point of the matter is that we, we can at least figure out what's good, what's not, and where to focus our efforts. Where do we spend that buck? It's like the pyramid you use, sir, right? I, I got to figure out if I have limited resources, where do I focus them? And the data is going to help us do that. And, and we got a relatively cheap uh, LMS system, free. Um, here's some more examples on the Analyst Mind project. It takes you to an actual problem, uh, gives you a multiple choice, and then it gives you instant feedback. Because that's, that's millennial as well, right? I want instant gratification. I want to know, am I right or am I wrong? And if I'm right, why? If I'm wrong, why am I wrong? That's OK. They want to know. And so we've built that into that. Um, I, I found it to be extremely useful because then you go, you know what? I did miss that logical fallacy. Or I, I made the wrong leap. Or I, I, I did mirror imaging. Or, and, and what's funny is we're starting to hear airmen talk in the lexicon of critical thinking. They're starting to talk about the dialectic. They're starting to talk about antithesis and things like that, which for graduates of the American high school system, that's a huge win for us, right? Especially in the English department. Um, the, the problems are not that hard. And one of the other things we've done is we've, we've asked people to contribute problems as well. And we're going to have a leaderboard of people that have made the most contributions in analytic mind projects. We're sort of crowdsourcing some of the work because there's a lot of pride in, in authorship of, hey, I built that two-page lesson. It doesn't take 30 minutes to do that. It takes a few hours, especially if you're going to incorporate the desired learning objectives into that. We've got a template that we share with people and say, if you want to build one of these things and increase the population, we will put your name on there. We will give you credit. And we'll have a leaderboard of how many people are contributing, right? Because another thing about millennials, they want to contribute. And a lot of, another thing about retired folks, I mean, like retired from active duty, guess what? They're full of this room contributing today. It doesn't matter if they're in civil service or industry. Guess what? They're all contributing. And folks want to contribute, especially if they know it's going to help that 19 or 20-year-old airman that could be deploying, right? So. It's proven to be very positive. So magic. Um, we talked about millennials and their attention span and, and how do you get training to them better, faster. Um, the secretary talked about innovation. Some of the challenges with apps, right? I mean, everything's an app today. There's an app for this event, um, which has the map and everything else, and it's on the, the Google store. Um, we don't really have a good process in the Air Force for validating apps. App space is the lead, but they'll tell you they have no capability to validate your app. Um, we have a great partnership with them, but the challenge is we can't keep up with technology. We can't keep up with industry. It's, a, it, it's been mentioned several times today, and it's one of those things that we've got to figure out, at least from a policy guidance. Someone has to say, you know what? This is goodness. Let's lean forward. We see no danger. Let's just do it. Right? So I'm going to show you a quick video. Maybe just a little louder. Hello. My name is Master Sergeant Justin Jackson, and I am assigned to 25th Air Force as the Superintendent of Technology Integration and Application Development, serving more than 12,000 intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance professionals in the 25th Air Force, including officers, enlisted, civilian, and total force airmen. What does this mean? 
It means that I'm in charge of creating MAGIC. MAGIC stands for Mobile Applications and Games for Intelligent Courseware. 25th Air Force, in partnership with Air Education and Training Command, developed MAGIC to revolutionize the way that we do training. MAGIC was born from the idea that we live in a mobile world and are not tied to any one device. Because of this, we wanted to be able to do training when and wherever and on a device of our choosing. But we didn't want it to feel like training. After looking at the peer-reviewed research on adult learning methodologies, we set out to build a library of applications and games designed for the most current technology to make the learning process more fun and engaging for all ages. What we are demonstrating today is just a sample of what we have accomplished and how far we have to go. We have much more magic in development ahead to meet our goal of revolutionizing analysis and delivering the best training that we can to our airmen. Now that you know what we're doing, I'd like to show you a little magic. Over the next few minutes, I will demonstrate how we have brought learning into the digital age. Our first video was designed to familiarize our airborne ISR professionals with the aircraft that they may fly on. These applications allow our airmen to become acquainted with U.S. and foreign aircraft. Every button in the application either provides information or allows the airmen to manipulate the aircraft's position. Each application has a built-in knowledge check to reinforce the information to the individual. This next series of applications demonstrates a variety of communication technologies. We provide a visual representation of complex classroom theory, making it more accessible and allowing the user to change variables in the scenario, leading them to grasp the theories faster. Touching the information button makes more information available at the user's fingertips. Many of our applications have been translated so that the concept can be learned in English and then practiced in the analyst language specialty. This application shows how a cellular phone connects through different towers to stay connected while on the network. This application provides users with an understanding of how an analog signal is converted to digital and back again. 25th Air Force has been charged with revolutionizing and developing culture of analysis for all ISR professionals, and critical thinking is the foundation of analysis. These next few applications take the lessons in critical thinking from 2,000 years ago, starting with Plato's Allegory of the Cave, and showing how these concepts are still applicable in today's environment. The use of critical thinking in the decision-making processes of every airman has a direct impact on overall mission accomplishment. We have taken this concept of critical thinking and developed a game that represents a day in the life of a deployed ISR professional. To successfully complete the mission, the correct decisions must be made using critical thinking skills. Quantum Intelligence Neural Network, or QUIN, is one of our more advanced games and allows users to fly a drone inside of QUIN's mind to reprogram her. This excerpt from the game deals with identifying different types of bias. Not only do we use the most current technology, but we looked to more traditional forms of entertainment and have developed our own board game that is a fun, social way to practice critical thinking. 25th Air Force has also partnered with the United States Air Force Academy to convert their Military Strategic Studies 200 course into an ebook format, shaping the way Air Force leaders train. In an effort to familiarize personnel with the operations of distributed common ground systems, also known as the DCGS, we developed a simulation that recreates the look and feel of a DCGS operations floor. Another of our academic partnerships is with Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. Computer science majors developed the games that you are seeing now to sharpen critical and cyber thinking skills. The magic show that you have witnessed today has allowed 25th Air Force to revolutionize the way that we train. Magic provides us the ability to train in a digital world and the real world. All magic applications were developed to be platform agnostic and will be shared with any government, DOD, or academic institution. This model lowers the overall cost for the taxpayer while still providing the highest quality training. Airmen are the most intelligent that we have ever recruited, and they are our greatest resource. Therefore, they must be able to train smarter, 
faster and better than ever before. Aim high, fly, fight, win. Am I still on? Okay, so um, we have a lot more going on with Magic. We're in constant development. And as I alluded to earlier, um, we already have that DCGS module you have also works in VR right now. The beauty is we, we built most of our stuff, here's my geekery part, with Unity. Um, and Unity drops into most of the current VR uh, programming today. I didn't realize how much free VR was out there. Uh, you can ride a roller coaster in VR. Fiesta Texas just opened a ride where they took an old roller coaster, put VR headsets on you in partnership with Samsung, and you get to fly an F-16. So you get the sensation and you're pulling G's, but, but what you're seeing is the inside of a cockpit of an F-16. Brilliant. I, I really think from a training perspective, um, if I can do all of my emergency procedures for an RC-135 or an EC-130 or a, um, a soft aircraft in VR, and I never have to go out to the airplane until I got to sign off on my EP, I've saved a lot of money. If I can do it, here's the shocking part. Everything you see works on the Air Force Standard desktop, which is about the lowest caliber of machine on the market today, right? But, but the executables work on that system, um, except for Quinn, because Quinn was built with Unreal, and, it, and it's just too complicated uh, a program. Um, but if I forget how to do super heterodyne multiplexing, uh, I can pull out my phone and do a quick review, right? Not that I do that on a regular basis, but our airmen have to. Um, I did use the app on um, how GSM networks work to, to convince my wife that I was not hanging up on her and that there were no towers at the intersection of 10 and 410. And that's why my call dropped every time, at least for T-Mobile. Um, We've got all of the apps on the Octane website. When you hit the drop down, it asks you if you want the um, PC version, iOS, or Android. And then you can download straight from there. We're still not happy with the interface and the number of clicks it takes. It's not as easy as the Google Play. But we're fixing that based on feedback uh, from the airmen. And we've got, uh, we've got all the Russian fighter and bomber aircraft done in VR. So next, there's going to be a VR download. So if you can have, if you can download Google Cardboard type software, um, which I have on my phone and it actually works on that too and you can buy a $40 VR headset. My kids have had so much fun with VR and it's a lot cheaper than an Xbox, let me tell you. And a lot of the stuff is free. Uh, you saw a brief glimpse of Quinn. Quinn 2 is out and in this episode, um, we actually worked with a super high-end company on the development of Quinn and it was not that expensive. Um, any idea how much it costs to build Grand Theft Auto? Guesses? $100 million. How much did Grand Theft Auto make the first week? $1 billion. Um, the team that built Quinn for us is uh, out of uh, San Luis Obispo. They actually have an Academy Award winning Hollywood screenwriter on the team. We sit down, we, we script based on current curriculum from our information environment advanced analysis course and, and scenarios, um, a realistic game-based environment. Because if you look at um, what's going on in the gaming industry today, uh, Minecraft, My, the code for Minecraft was written in one week. The guy who built that code sold it for $2.2 billion recently. And it is the, the, the top game. I'm sure anybody who has kids in this room knows what Minecraft is, right? There is actually a website, minecraft.edu. Teachers are using Minecraft in the classroom. Why? It teaches you how to, or, or teaches you principles on finance, economics, uh, farming, construction, all of that stuff's part of it. And it's all educational based if you put it to the right use. And that's kind of our concept here. In Quinn 2, they're actually flying a drone through uh, Iran looking for uh, nuclear fissile material. Is it feasible that they have that stuff? Absolutely. Is it in the news? Is it current? Is the storyline good? Are the characters good? Absolutely. And it's, and it's about repeatability. If I can get the airmen to play the game more than once, to go for the high score. But what happens then is you get experiential learning. Uh, you get self-directed learning, unbeknownst to them. But 
but we win, right? If, if the airman starts to inculcate those key principles um, and make them a part of what they do every day, then I think the Air Force and a country win. Um, on the website, we actually have a video of the next episode. Um, so we talked about resources. On the resources tab, you can actually go through and find every short course, course schedules for DOD, government courses, uh, and even those that are out in academia, and also commercial courses. What we're trying to do is, is build a career-long sort of um, course schedule for airmen that they can pick based on what they want to do, where they can continually build from level 100 to 200 to 300, 400 courses. Primarily, we're, we're after the free stuff, right? Um, so that airmen can continue. But, but there are courses actually from from Canada and the UK that are really good, some really good literature from them that's also good. Um, everything on, on policy, guidance, AFIs, DOD, IC standards, it's a one-stop shop for every resource on critical thinking and advanced analysis. Um, when you hit the academic link, it takes you to every program. It'll even take you to accredited programs like um, the folks at Goodfellow worked out a partnership with Angelo State. If you go to the Intel officer course, you get 12 credit hours towards a master's degree in strategic studies. That means a third of your master's is done just by going to your basic course. They're working a bachelor's agreement um, also, right Kelly, for the, for the Intel enlisted courses and that's moving forward. Um, there are a lot of other universities that, that do the same thing. When the Marine Corps found out, they jumped on, now the Marine Corps uh, Intel course is accredited by Angelo State. So why is that important? It's about time, right? And if, and if we give our, our airmen the resources to get a free bachelor's, a free master's, or even one that's already partially done. Same, same concept as CCAF, right? That was part of our, our drive, and, and a better educated airman is a better airman, right? We have some of the, the best and brightest today, and they want to get a degree. I mean, I came in the Air Force in 1983 to uh, get, go to college. That, that was my driving factor, and then I found out I loved it, and here I am almost 33 years later. Um, all the resources are listed. The, the user interface is actually pretty good. It'll take you, the, the challenge for us is maintaining the links, right? So you gotta go back and, and it's a bit of a job to make sure that anytime you get a dead link that you go back and fix it. But um, we've built that into our plan. Um, to, we actually have a class going on right now in San Antonio on the Information Advanced Analysis course. This is an OSD sponsored course. Uh, that is not just for Intel, it's for planners, operators, um, anybody that's going to an, an AOC, for example, or deploying, it gives you, it gives you an understand, it, it's like a, like six weeks of school in two weeks with a lot of homework every night um, and all very highly qualified instructors. And we sponsor about four courses a year from uh, 25th Air Force. We, we're gonna do one at Langley, sir, uh, and we open it up to a lot of people. And when we did the class in San Antonio, we had 120 applications for 30 seats. Uh, some folks come in from out of, out of town. It's, it's unit funded TDY, but when we can help, we pay for the TDY. And we try to, we actually have a board at OSD that selects the students so that we have a good mix. And you know, sometimes the brightest student in the class is the senior airman, surprisingly. And sometimes it's a, it's a pilot major who's not even an, an Intel person, and they, they blow everybody away, right? You just don't know, and, and what we really get out of it is this desire for more. Every student has come back. So far, we've trained almost 400 airmen over the last three years. Uh, we've done the course. Anytime PACAF, or not PACAF, OSD has a course, um, we kind of at least get 10 Air Force seats by uh, partnering with them, so we always make sure that Airmen get a shot at taking the course. And I had a 20 year master sergeant, uh, one and zero, uh, Intel Ops, tell me that it was the best training he had had in 20 years in the Air Force. Um, and I've had uh, 30 year civilians, GS-13s come back and said, where's this course been? Thank you for bringing it. Thank you for funding this and getting this out to us. So it's all part of the bigger picture of revolutionizing analysis, ISR 2023, the secretary talked about the fact that everybody wants more ISR. They can't get enough. More ISR, more ISR, more ISR, because it drives everything, right? 
And, and if we can get better analysts within the ISR community to provide better intelligence, how do we make heads or tails about what the F-35 brings back? That's big data. That's a whole lot of stuff. How is that airman going to know where to start? What's the most important bits, right, that the, that the mission brings back? And that's why we're really sort of building our foundation on critical thinking. Um, we've had comms people come in the class and they've come back and said, man, I could use this in my comms training. Maintenance folks have looked at some of our apps and said, I wish I had that at Keesler. So we gave all our stuff to Second Air Force. We're like, use it where you can. It belongs to the Air Force. And that's sort of been part of our driving principle. I think I killed a machine again or I'm at the end. Okay, and I have left time for questions. Um, so we have not been shy about how can industry help with this? So like I said, industry is a partner. Um, I have a lot of people that come see me and they go, hey, check out what we're doing with training. So what I do is I say, let me show you what the standard is if you want to work with us. That's our first comment, right? And we said, here's what we're doing. Show me how you can um, make it better, right? You could be like BASF, right? We don't make X, Y, or Z, but we make it better. Um, I actually talked to a gentleman here uh, from a company that I met out at FCA last time called Bestica. Funny story, how do you get a company named Bestica, right? It's a combination of Best and Metallica, because that's what they were listening to at the time. I asked that question, and um, they did the UI for USAA. Um, so we talked to Havinder and said, can you look at our stuff and give us some ideas on how we can make the user interface or the user experience better? Um, if you have something in the cyber arena that fits in with how to educate millennials, we want to talk to you, we want to partner with you. You know, we're all about working with everybody. Some people are doing things in human language translation. I talked to this fine gentleman about uh, Watson, because uh, I'm also the uh, human language technology guy, and um, we're collaborating on how we can use IBM's Watson in certain areas for either for NASIC or for how they can work with us and some of the other, you know what I've done in that stuff, right, Dano? So, um, absolutely. Bring us what you got. I, I take all meetings. I'm always happy to listen because I, I learn something from everybody, right? You always do. Um, and it doesn't matter what their background is. A lot of people have good ideas on training. Gartner, I've been a Gartner delegate for a while. Um, and I, I got so much information from gamify and gamification. Again, industry coming to help the Air Force. I love it. I, I'm, as long as it's not illegal or immoral, I'm on board. Unethical as well. And it has to be cheap. Because <laughs> you will tell everybody I'm cheap, right, Dano? Yes, sir. Here you go. Here you go. So right now it's a beta site. Um, I can give you the link and my card. And I, I'm, I, we got no secrets. Absolutely. Yep, see me afterwards, I'll give you the link and everything. Or send me an email, I'll send you the link, it'll be even easier, because then you can just put the button. And it works on your phone, Android or iOS. Um, works on my Surface Pro, works on my iPad, my Mac Air. Um, Do you have to be military to use it? Government yeah. is okay, yeah. The only thing I can't do right now is I can't give it to industry yet, right? I'd like to be able to, but the JAG's still working on how we can do that legally. Um, because we paid for it with government dollars, et cetera. I can give it to academia, funny enough. So there's some organizational conflict of interest issues that, that the JAG's working through to see if we can do that. I mean, personally, if somebody else from another industry could help us make it better, I, I see goodness in that, right? They're, they're not the enemy. They're part of the total team, and, and people need to understand that. Anybody else? Nate? Chip, on behalf of General Shea, I'd like to present you with this uh, inter FC International coin. I'll use the left hand today thank since you. you're, you're partially crippled. <laughs> thank you. And thank you most importantly for serving your country thank and you. for advancing the future of ISR training into the 21st century. Uh, this, this guy makes a difference, really. This is the kind of people that really makes a difference. Thank you very much. We appreciate thank it. Thank you.
Uh, one, one more advertisement. Go ahead. No, after you. Uh, one more advertisement. The casino night tonight is free to everyone. It's free food, free fun, and they got some great prizes to give out. I personally sure, bought them last Saturday. The we got Bose noise canceling headset. We got a beautiful Seiko watch. Oh. You know, you got a chance to win something cool tonight. So roam down to Casa Rio on the River Walk, 6 o'clock, 6 to 10, and you all have a good time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody.